All right, I know I'm a little late on this one, but I just watched a movie on HBO Max called Parasite, 2019 Academy Award winning film, and I liked it. I liked it. I was not expecting that. You know, the title like Parasite, I was expecting uh, something more horror-y, I guess you could say, uh, but the Parasite title is more metaphorical, if anything. Because this movie is about a poor family that like lives in the slums and they all get jobs working for a rich family and uh, the poor family is considered the parasite, you know, feeding off the host of this rich family uh, because they scheme their way into getting these jobs uh, for this rich family. And pretty damn good film, you know. I was, you know, halfway through it and I was kind of wondering like why it won an Oscar. <laughs> but by the end, I that climax, I'm like, all right, I'll give it to you. Good climax, solid film, solid uh, foreign Korean film. Uh, this whole film's in subtitles, and it's great, excellent. I was a little perplexed as uh, to what the lesson of the film is, or what the moral uh, lesson of the film is. Um, nearing the ending, you know, I started thinking maybe this movie's teach a lesson uh, about you know how if you cross like one moral line, you'll just keep crossing lines until you do something horrific. Uh, I feel like that's kind of what they were going for because this movie starts out and the son of the poor family, the family that's living in the slums, he has a friend that has a connection to this rich family that's looking for a tutor uh, for their daughter and he's able to get him the job. But in order to get him the job, they have to forge um, you know, papers, some college documents saying that he graduated, which doesn't seem like anything bad in the moment when it's happening. It's kind of like a throwaway line. And you see them force the papers real quick, and it's like, it's not even like a second thought, you know. And he tells his father that I right, force these papers, and the dad says, "I'm proud of you, son." As he's like going off to go get the job, so clearly, you know, forgery. That's a line they don't mind crossing. And honestly, like looking at their position in life, I have no problems with them crossing that line either. You know, uh, just my opinion, but I really don't mind uh, lying on a resume as long as you do the job right you know who really cares how you got it as long as you're doing your job good who really cares go earn that money you know what i'm saying especially for you know people in dire straits that you see in this movie you know family that's living in a slum they can barely eat nobody has a job they're so desperate at the beginning of the film they're even letting like these like chemicals from the street cleaners blow into their windows because they might get a discount on something they might get something free and even with all that going, I feel like the family's actually fairly positive. And they seem like a tight, well-knit unit. And it seems like they all love each other. And they're always talking about, in the film, like going through the film, the characters keep talking about, oh, we got to have a plan. What's the plan? We got to make a plan. And they always talk about a plan, a way to get out of where, where they are. And I really don't want to use like the slippery slope like fallacy uh, that we, you know everyone gets trapped into thinking. But it really seems like, you know... They cross that one moral line with forging the documents, and then they just keep crossing another line and another line, and it gets worse and worse and worse, and worse things keep happening as the movie keeps going. And you get to know the family a little bit, you get to see their struggle, and you're kind of rooting for them to, you know, get these jobs and have it work out, you know? I'm not thinking anything sinister is happening when I'm watching the movie. I'm not thinking, like, this family that I'm following is evil in any way. I really just think like they're just trying to earn money. They're just trying to, you know, get jobs that they can't get. Just to earn enough money to live comfortably in the slums. Like they're they're not earning enough money to get out of where they are. I mean, they're earning enough money to just live more comfortably. And I think uh, comfortability is also another big part of this film. I am going to spoil some things in this. I'm not going to spoil every little thing, but you know, I suggest you watch the movie because it's good. I mean, I don't know how many Oscars it has to win for you to wa like watch it. <laughs> I know it took me like four years to watch it, even though it won all these awards. A lot of times I do that anyway, because eventually I'm just going to get around to watching it anyway. Because of uh, all the acclaim it gets, right? At some point, everybody will see the movie. Because awards are not, you know, a good movie lives way past its uh, release date, you know. And I think this movie, Parasite, is going to have a very long lifespan. But yeah, minor spoilers... There's another person living in the house, like, below the house in the basement that's, like, you know, walled off. <laughs> that's, like, the, that's one of the big twists, like, halfway through the movie. Uh, that the former maid of the place, that they caused her to lose her job uh, so that 
the mom of the poor family could take the job in this, you know, rich people's house. The former maid's husband is living underneath the stairs. And it's a huge revelation, big shocking moment. What you realize is that he's been down there for four years and he doesn't want to leave. He's perfectly comfortable and fine, you know, living in this bunker-esque, like, basement underneath this house. You know, getting food brought to him, um, you know, from the fridge upstairs. And um, one of the main characters, the dad of the poor family, asked him, like, why are you still here? And he's like, I'm comfortable here. And you learn that this character, he's, like, in tons of debt to loan sharks. You know, if he ever shows his face, he's probably going to get killed. So the bunker's the only place he really can live. You know, this <laughs> living underground is the only place he can go to. And he's perfectly comfortable with that. And I think that drives home the theme of comfortability, you know. This family was getting really comfortable uh, taking shortcuts and deceiving this other family to get jobs and earn money to improve their comfortability. Uh, this guy downstairs uh, living like a parasite off the rich family is comfortable doing that. And we all like to think, oh, we wouldn't do that. You know, none of us listening, we wouldn't do that. But when it comes to being comfortable, a lot of people would rather be comfortable than not. I think that is, you know, a major theme of the movie. Classism uh, is probably another thing of the movie. Um, there's a part where the rich father, you know, of the rich family is talking about how his driver, the father of the poor family, smells. He can smell him. He doesn't like his smell. You know, poor people have a certain smell to them. It's this classism that's uh, running through the film. And you can understand, you know, the father's frustration immensely when he hears that. And the acting, you know, by... <laughs> this I can't remember his name, obviously. It's a Korean actor and stuff like that. But his acting is extraordinary because uh, you could see his demeanor change when he hears that the the rich people think he smells. Like his whole demeanor changes and you can see the hate festering in him. And you understand the hate because, you know, here's a guy who's struggling just to make enough for his family to live. And this other guy has more than enough. He has too much. And, you know, clearly not humble about it all. Just talks down to people lesser than him and stuff like that. Which, you know, is what rich people do sometimes. And there's another great line in the movie where it's like, you know, if I was this rich, I'd be nice every day. There'd be no reason to be mean if I was this rich. I think it's what the mom says at one point. So, you know, all this really boils into the climax of the film with the two fathers of the two separate houses, the rich family and the poor family. And it's a moment that happens in the climax. I'm not really going to spoil too much, but... As it's happening, you understand completely why it's happening. And you don't really blame the guy for doing it. You know, once you watch the movie and listen to this review, you'll know what I'm talking about. And it all really comes back to another theme, you know, what is you know, more valuable? Is it money or is it love? Is it family type thing? And those themes definitely uh, play through this movie. But, you know, I don't want to go on too long. All I'll say is that it's a very good film. Very good film. A little thriller. Uh, not really horror. I mean, there are some moments that it gets a little tense, but really it's just that climax is where the action goes off. I liked it a lot. I still don't think this was the best movie in 2019. Certainly a very good film, but I think the Academy is also doing its subtle racism with that. It's just like, you know, uh, the Koreans made a good movie. Let's, you know, <laughs> put it up for an Oscar, but tons of good movies come out of Korea all the time. This is just the first time they're acknowledging a good movie from a foreign country. Uh, but plenty of foreign movies come out that are better than American films. Of course, Academy doesn't want to acknowledge that at all. Because then they'll lose like their vice grip on a, you know, movies and entertainment, really. But, you know, just look at your worldwide box office numbers. You know, movies make way more outside the States than in the States these days. That's where the majority of their box office comes from. And it... Seems like other countries have really caught up to what Hollywood does. I mean, when you watch Parasite, it's shot and looks just like an American movie. It just has subtitles because they're speaking a different language. But it looks like an American movie. A movie that focuses on characters and story. And what do you know? You make a good movie. It's not that much of a surprise. But, you know, that's just my two cents on that. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was just thinking about that. You know, watching uh, the credits of the film, I'm like... You know, this is a really good film, but is it better than some of the films that came out in 2019? I don't know. I just think it's a really, really good film. I have to go back and look at what the competition was, but I'm pretty sure, like, films like The Joker came out that year. And that movie was really gripping. 
this movie is pretty gripping too. Lots of good movies. Anyway, that's it for now. Comment below. Let me know what you thought of uh, Parasite. I think I've rambled long enough about it. I uh, just watched it. I liked it. Wanted to record my thoughts on it. I'll probably put this review up later. Doesn't matter when I put it up anyway, right? <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.